Hi everyone, welcome back to my home studio. This is day 32 of my quarantine distraction videos that I am making for my students and for all of you just to have a distraction from what's going on in the world. So this is five weeks today ago that I have been out of school. So it was five weeks today on a Friday that I was um, closed out of my school. My students and I have not been seeing each other in all this time. It is a very challenging time for everyone and I feel so, my heart breaks for my students who have all these beautiful projects in the cabinet that may or may not get done. I'm still holding out hope that I might be able to see some over the summer and we can finish some things up, but I have some seniors who had some beautiful projects that uh, they're just sitting there and I have no idea what's gonna come of those. Um, I, my heart breaks for my own daughter, who is also a senior, who was absolutely loving her senior year in high school and was ready for all of the end of the year events. And it looks like all of those have been canceled or put on hold. And this is nothing like anyone has ever seen before. So as a distraction, let's think about more pleasant times, pleasant things, pleasant ways to focus our energies and clay is one of those fun things. So based on some requests that I've had, I have had several people that asked for more hand building sorts of lessons. And one person in particular, and I sincerely apologize, I cannot find the email or the person who sent this because I've received so many uh, comments in the past few weeks and I unfortunately should have written this one down a few weeks ago. But I had, I think it was a guy, that requested that I do a citrus juicer. So, here's today's video. It is a hand-built citrus juicer. The plate part is from a slab over a mold, and the middle part is just a pinch pot that I attached and made it have the texture. So, oh, and here's the bottom of it. So you can see it kind of goes up inside. So that part is hollow. So I hope you find this enjoyable. Please subscribe to my channel so you can get more videos on working with clay. Tell more people about the channel if you know other people that like working with clay. Spread the word for me. And also um, in the uh, video description, you'll find links, especially a link to my Google Doc with some of my recommended materials uh, that are available on Amazon and some of my other favorite suppliers. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can. For making a juicer, we're making it in two parts. One part, I have a wedged piece of clay. The other part, I'm going to be rolling a slab. Depending on how sturdy and thick you want your clay slab, you could make it anywhere from a quarter of an inch to say like what I have here is three eighths of an inch. I'm making mine a little heftier for a little bit more strength and durability. Now as I roll it out, just like with any slab, I continuously flip it, rotate it. Once I have it rolled out, then I'm going to rib and compress the surface of both sides to make it a little stronger. Now I'm trying to find a good size circle for the plate and I'm just using the top of my banding wheel and I will cut that out. In order to get the shape like a dish, I could just fold it up or I could set it over a mold and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little cornstarch spread that cornstarch out with a very soft bristled brush and then on the exterior of my bowl I will add that so it becomes more of a dish shape with a, a little rim For the small part in the middle, that is going to be the juicer. You want to think about having a hunk of clay that is probably just a little bit smaller than the actual 
juicer part that you intend to create in the middle. So I'm going to pinch this. I stick my thumb up in the middle of it and I pinch it and I am keeping this about three eighths of an inch thick or half an inch in thickness. So it is shaped like that, like a dome. And then while it's still very plastic, I'm just going to try to shape it as much as I can to be the juicer part. Okay, so this is the middle part that will go up inside of my citrus, and this is the tray part. If I want to have a foot on the plate part, I can go ahead and do that at this point since it is upside down and sitting on here. I'm going to start off by rolling a coil. Using the same thickness sticks, I'm just rolling out my coil so I know it's going to be an even thickness. Now, you may have seen this in another video, but I have a corn holder that I bent the edges just a little bit. This allows me to have a, a bevel, and this is going to be my foot maker. Now, the reason that it's bent is the bevel gives me a fatter side that will be attached to the clay. So let's stick this on here. All right, so I have this relatively in the middle. And now I'm just scoring where the foot ring will be. All right. Now that I have that scored, I can take my flattened coil that I made with my foot maker with the corn holder, and I'm going to score the big fat edge. I could use water, but because I have some throwing slip from my wheel, I'm just going to use some slip. All right, so getting it approximately in the center there. And then I'm going to score the two ends as this foot comes together. I want to make sure that it's getting really nicely joined and connected. Now, I wanted to be careful not to make this foot ring too narrow because obviously a citrus juicer, you have to put some pressure on. And if you make the foot ring too narrow, you could end up by creating something that is tippy. So I want it to be very functional. So I made it a nice wide foot ring. Underneath really where that angle change happens and where it starts to come up on the exterior. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so this is all in the first session that I've done. It's still very plastic at this point. I'm going to allow it to get closer to leather hard. I'm just going to store this right on there because then I know that the moisture of the bottom of this will stay the same as that. And uh, I'll cover this. I'm going to come back to it tomorrow. So if I cover it with a heavy towel, like a, a dry um, bath towel, I bet it will get leather hard in 10 hours or so overnight. So the, all the scrap that I have, I am just squirting that down and I'll put it back in a bag and we'll check this out tomorrow and see how it looks. All right, so I have allowed this to sit with the bath towel on it overnight and these are in the leather hard state. 
they're still just a little on the sticky side of leather hard, but that's perfect for what I need. And I'll move this stuff out of the way. There we go. In order to get this straight and cleaned up, I am going to use a sure form or a shredder. So this is a Mud Tools shredder. Sure form is a Stanley brand that you can buy at the hard hardware store. Um, I have the Mud Tools shredders that I have in my classroom, but it works very much like a cheese grater. And when you drag it across, it will basically grate your clay. The key with using this is I try to use it in almost a diagonal fashion as I pull. Like I try to pull it in a manner that I don't get flat facets, but I'm trying to get more of a rounded appearance. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Then I can use a rib. Now this is also a Mud Tools rib. I love these. The small baby ribs are really indispensable in my classroom. We use them all the time. I can curve it, so you can see I can bend it. I like the little flexible yellow ribs. And again, I am on the sticky side of Leather Hard, so the yellow can easily compress and get rid of the uh, shredder marks. If you have, your clay is a little bit on the drier side, you may need to go with uh, something stiffer like the stainless steel one. I didn't need to go quite that stiff though. Okay, now the bottom edge down here, I would like for this to be a little bit flatter and not have the undercut like this, if you can see it comes back in. So I'm going to use the shredder and I'm going to level the bottom just a little bit lower. So that's really going to fit right in the middle. Going to position it in the middle and then mark it. Before I attach, I am going to tweak the outer edge just a little bit. I wanted to make sure that this gets a little extra smooth because if I want to turn it over, it would be easier to do it before I have it physically attached. I'm rounding the bottom edge of this uh, just to help ease the transition there so it becomes just slightly more rounded. I would use my fingers, or in this case, I can use the sponge because this clay that I'm using doesn't have grog. If it did have grog, I would strictly use my fingers with water. That's looking pretty good. Now, one of the things that I'm looking for is I want to get my eyes across level with it. So as I look straight across, I want to make sure that it does look level. If I have any inconsistencies, I want to fix that. Make sure everything on the edge looks consistent. That's looking good. Now, one other thing that I think would be a nice little feature is to have just a little kind of a pouring spout. So as I juice my fruit, I'll have the ability to pour the juice out from a little spout area. You certainly don't have to do this, but it gives you a way to kind of funnel that out a little bit. 
and then I'll just tidy that up. And I'm just kind of thinning it, pulling it a little bit. One of the things that I like to do whenever I have a pouring spout is I do try to make sure that I've got a nice crisp angle on a spout that it's not like super rounded because a crisp angle actually helps your liquid to kind of come off a little bit more cleanly so it, it's not as dribbly. I have never made a juicer before, so I've been debating, do I attach this and then texture the top, or do I texture the top and then attach it? I am deciding that I'm going to texture the top before I attach it. This is the very first time I've gone to make one of these, so I'm kind of figuring it out as I go. I'm going to start by making some lines to divide this evenly. So I'm starting off by dividing it into sixths. And I'll do one line in the middle of each of those. to divide it into twelfths. The tool that I'm going to be using in order to cut this texture is the Kemper Mini Ribbon Tool. It's the larger of the two triangle tips. Um, I use this a lot in my classes. Now, when you think about how I've uh, set out the lines, the lines could indicate it's the middle of the carving. So it could either be the deep part of the carving or the high point of the carving. So in the case of this, I'm going to use the line as the high point of the carving. So I'm going to angle the line down away from that point using this triangle tip tool and as I have a little bit left there in the middle, I'll make another indent, like so. Okay, so let's keep doing that for each of them. Okay. So I have this carved. It's still, as I said, on the sticky side of leather hard. So I will let it get a little bit drier before I actually attempt to clean this part. I could, however, go ahead and physically attach it. So let's swap this out. All right, so it has been scored on both parts. Going to add some slip. And then I'll add slip on both halves. This needs to be a very good solid connection. Now, I could create uh, just a tiny little vent hole like that in the middle. Um, so the air pressure is released, but I am going to trim out the actual middle and I'll trim it a little bit bigger as well than that because I want to be able to blend on the interior. So as I position this, I want to get it as close to the center as I possibly can. And then I'm going to flip this over, take some of this extra clay that's in the middle of this hole, and I'm going to blend it upward into the cone part. 
Again, I wouldn't have to do this, but I'm going to clean up this interior so this, this is a completely hollow and cleaned on the inside. All right, that is temporary, but that'll hold it. And again, I wanna make sure that I didn't disturb my edge, that it still looks even and consistent. Looking good, okay. Um, the bottom edge down here is going to get cleaned up when I go to clean it later, but if I have a gap, like I had a couple spots where maybe I have a gap, I'm just gonna push this down to make sure it's actually making contact there. Most of it looks like it's making pretty good contact. I just had one spot where it looked like it was kind of sticking up a little bit. So there we go. That's the start. I'm gonna let this dry for a few more hours under a cloth. All right, I've had this sitting out for a few hours, so it got a little bit drier. At this point, I want to just clean it up. If I have any little chunky things, I wanna to try to get those out of there, and then I will clean it up with a paintbrush. Okay, now with a little bit of water and a paintbrush, I'm gonna go through the carving. All right, top is pretty much cleaned up. Now down here on the bottom, I'm just gonna tidy this up a little bit. And right up in there, I just wanna tidy that with a paintbrush. And there we go. That is my handmade juicer. I hope you all enjoyed that from start to finish. Pretty easy project and pretty utilitarian to have in your kitchen too. So enjoy, please subscribe, like, comment, um, leave me any questions below in the comments if you have any. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can.